What's up everybody, welcome back to another video. I know what you're thinking, finally, I've actually updated something, or uploaded something rather. Did you miss me? Because I know I missed you guys. Uh, but basically I figured this is going to be my first video uh, in Taiwan and I figured I'd make it about uh, things, how, like how this place has made an impression on me at first. Now, I'm going to be talking about a lot of things that are going to be a little bit um, on the face value. It's not going to be you know, in depth because a lot of the things I say might not actually be true. Um, just because I haven't lived here for long enough and I'm not going to make a video about how Taiwan is if I don't really know yet. I wanted to give you my first impressions on, on Taiwan and what I think about it. Now, right off the bat, I mean, if you guys watch my live stream, then you already know that I am loving Taiwan. It's amazing. It's, it's just, and this is objectively speaking, better than, than, than China. Um, it just is. And I know I'm going to piss off a lot of uh, Chinese people or a lot of the Wu Maos and you guys are gonna be commenting like, well, how could you say that blah blah blah, I lived in Taiwan and China, I choose Taiwan every time. That's fine. I'm just saying for me personally, I find living here a thousand times better than it was uh, in China. I'm incredibly happy here. And then it, it's just because there's, there's a number of reasons and I'm gonna talk about those right now. And the first reason I'm gonna talk about is, is, is riding. Um, you guys know that one of the biggest reasons I left China was because of the riding and the fact that you can't own a scooter there anymore. Well, like in a lot of places, petrol powered scooters are banned. Uh, which sucks. Uh, here though, everyone has a scooter. There's more scooters in Taiwan than there are people. It's, it's insane. Um, even the electric scooters are better. You guys know I have a, a, a big hate for electric scooters. Um, but there's a Taiwanese scooter. I think it's Taiwanese. It's called Gogoro or something like that. I've seen those rip down the road like really fast. They're, they're ridiculously fast. Um, and I've also noticed that living here without a scooter is almost impossible. You have to have a scooter. And motorcycles too. I mean, there's a lot of those as well, like a lot of Kimcos and Hartfords and Taiwanese made scooters, and there's some other like ridiculously fast ones, like uh, you know CBR or 1000s or whatever up and around the roads. Um, and you know, it, it's so nice to even hear that because in China, China's a really loud place. Mainland China is a very uh, loud place. So you know, there's always going to be construction or something being built or something being torn down. You're always listening to it. Taiwan is also loud, but not because of the construction. It's actually loud because of the amount of scooters and motorcycles that go by, just hearing the roar of their engines. Uh, it's it's loud, but it's it's nice because I love to ride. I don't have a scooter just yet, but hopefully I'll get one soon. And I'll make another video about that as well. But I absolutely cannot wait to ride here. I'm I'm super excited about it. Taiwan is also obviously smaller than the mainland China, and so are the things here. Uh, and that has to do because. It's a smaller country with a lot of people. It's really densely populated, and so the streets are a lot smaller, whereas in the mainland China, um, the streets are quite broad and large for the most part, you know, a lot of lanes. It's just because they have the room to do that. In Taiwan, there's a lot of smaller roads, a lot of different alleyways, which I really like, because what that means is you get a lot more local sort of mom and pop restaurants where you can go and eat more like food made by those people. It's not really a chain thing, although they have chains as well. I just think it's kind of neat to sit in a little restaurant that can only sit like six or ten people or something like that. I think it's really, really interesting. Um, the apartments are decently sized. I live here. I'll make a video of showing you guys around where I live later. Um, and it's a good size. It's, it's comparable to, to China so far. I haven't really seen that many, but from what I've seen so far, they're, they're decently sized, unless of course you live in Taipei, you will definitely see how the density and how things are smaller will, will affect you a lot more. I don't live in Taipei, I live in Taichung, where things are just a little bit more spaced out, I guess. I mean, that was one of the biggest reasons I moved to Asia in the first place, was being able to like duck into these cool little alleyways where they have different restaurants or different shops or street food or something like that, something kind of off the grid, something you wouldn't know unless you lived around the area. That's what I was really excited about when I came to, to, to Asia. And I didn't get that so much in, in China. Um, I did when I lived in Hunan, there was a lot of street food, but not a ton of tiny little cool alleyways you can go and explore. And I guess it depends on what, again, China's a huge place, it depends. Sometimes you'll find little alleyways like in Beijing or something, but where I live in Huizhou, not so much. Things are bigger, more spread out, and, and, and uh, as new cities are popping up, or as they redevelop cities, they're making things larger and, and bigger, and they're tearing away kind of the older, uh, densely built buildings that they had before. Another thing that's really shocked me so far is self-expression. Uh, it's not something that Asians are known for so much um, because they sort of think that you shouldn't really be putting your opinion out there. I mean, you should have the right to, you should have to earn the right to express your opinion. You shouldn't just be walking around talking about what you believe is right or wrong. Taiwan's the same, however, you just, you get really interesting things like uh, one of the guys I work with went to India, and I was like, why are you going to India? 
Um, and he was like, because I'm a Buddhist and there's like a really famous area there where all Buddhists go, so almost like a pilgrimage. And I was shocked because in mainland China, I have never, ever, ever heard of someone traveling to go do something for religious reasons. Um, and the, I mean, that's a different topic maybe for a different video, but little things like that um, and talking to Taiwanese people about uh, things that they find interesting or hobbies that they have isn't something you would normally get in the mainland China. And I know a lot of these things, but this is kind of like a, oh, how does China compare to Taiwan video? It's not, it's just because I lived in China for so long. So my impression of Taiwan is gonna be a little bit different than from someone that maybe moved from America and came here. Um, but that's something I really find really cool. And the other thing too is Taiwanese people seem to be pretty interested in life in China. They kind of have this, um, you know, they hear things about what it's like to live there, but they don't really know because a lot of people haven't been there before. And I remember I was drinking with a bunch of people and there was this really old, well, not really old, he was probably in his 60s, maybe 70s, I can't really tell. But I told him that I lived in China and his ears perked up and he was asking me all these questions and we had this big conversation and I was like, what, what's, you know, why are you, why are you so interested in China? Like, have you been there? Do you want to go? And he's like, no, my parents, you know, escaped the communists. They ran away from the communists um, well, well, years ago and came to Taiwan and that's why I'm here. And so he has this sort of history with Taiwan uh, and, and China that he really wanted to, to know about and learn about. And it was cool talking to him about those things. Or uh, some of the people I work with are into things like art or music, or they like to, you know, do all kinds of sports and things like that. It's not something I'm used to because most Chinese people, I made about a video about this, to us Westerners are kind of boring. And I know that's going to, that's going to, when I say that, it's going to throw people the wrong way or maybe make you think like I'm a huge dick, but it's true. If you ask, uh, you know, if you're a teacher and you're in China, ask your students what their hobbies are. They will, all of them, I guarantee you will say sleeping, play basketball, play Dota, play CS, go to the internet cafe. That's pretty much all they do. Um, and I don't say that with any hate in my heart. It's just what I've noticed living in China is that people don't really have time for their own hobbies because they're in school all the time. They don't, you know, when they get out of school, they're studying or they're doing homework. And then, you know, when they when they finish school, well, then there's pressure to get married and they start a family life and they have to get a job so they can afford a house. And no one really has any time for themselves, especially China being such a collective society. Much like Taiwan, it's just, it's, it's, I just, I don't know why, I just find Taiwanese people more willing to express themselves via hobbies or the way they dress or the things they like to do. Um, even the cars they drive here uh, are, are really cool. I really, really like, there's these really old, gorgeous BMWs I like from the 80s and 90s with that sort of boxy style that they keep really well maintained and they just make it look really nice instead of, again, compared to the mainland China where one in every five cars is a map of the Dakar rally on the rear windshield, and but you know it's never even touched a track because it's some 20-year-old Mianbaocha that, you know, is gonna fall apart any second. Um, I just find Taiwanese people more worldly. And that could have to do with the fact that a lot of Taiwanese people, I've noticed, have traveled more. Uh, they've been to school in other countries or they've, um, you know, gone on trips with their family or something like that to other places and they've seen how other people live. Um, whereas, again, most people in China, I know I keep making that comparison, but it's the only thing I got, is people don't really travel outside of China that much. Some people do, um, if they have money or if they're fortunate enough to uh, move out of the country, but most of the locals stay sometimes even in their own hometown because it's too expensive to travel uh, and it's, it's, too, it's too much and plus Chinese people really don't like being away from their families for too long. The next thing I want to talk about is food. Food here really kind of shocks me a little bit. Um, I did say objectively that Taiwan is better than China. Uh, if you're going to come to Asia and you're trying to decide between the two countries, I would choose Taiwan or I would, uh, I would recommend Taiwan rather. Uh, but the thing about Taiwanese food, I mean local Taiwanese food, is it's incredibly simple and not as varied as mainland Chinese food. And I know someone's going to put in the comment section, well Taiwan is China and that's just a part of their food. That's not, I'm, I'm trying to separate the two places because for the sake of the video and shut up. But Taiwanese food is usually just like rice, pork on top, rice, beef on top, rice, chicken on top. It's not like that, you know, the local kind of traditional Chinese food is pretty simple. Um, but I will say that I do miss mainland Chinese food a lot. It's uh, something I can't really find here. I can find like Shandong noodles or Shandong dumplings or something like that, but I can't find, you know, specific parts of uh, China food I can get here. But it doesn't mean Taiwanese food is bad. They do have a lot of things like sweet foods or bubble tea or, um, 
you know, of, of a lot of international foods. For some reason, I keep seeing Italian restaurants on like every corner. They do have a lot more uh, of an international cuisine here, uh, more of a foodie scene, I guess. I remember when I was walking through Taipei for the first time when I came here, I was trying to find something to eat, and the only thing I could find was like desserts and bubble tea. That's the only thing I can find. Um, another big part of uh, food here is Japanese food. I've noticed they do love their little Japanese lunch boxes that they buy. Japanese uh, culture does have a big influence on Taiwan. There's a lot of Japanese restaurants, a lot of Japanese food, um, and it's all really, really good. I'm really happy I can get that because uh, Japanese food in the mainland tends to be pretty expensive. Um, but here, yeah, it's expensive, but it's 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 not as expensive, and it's it's widely available, and I'm really enjoying it. I love the food here. Um, so basically that's just it. I mean, my first impressions are, I, I love this place. The people are super friendly, everyone's nice, everyone's polite, they're interesting, they have hobbies. I love the way people drive here. I haven't seen any accidents yet. The roads are maintained and repaid within hours and, and everything is new. It's also really clean. That's something I actually forgot to mention before I let you go is that it, Taiwan is incredibly clean because the thing is if you, if you, if you have a small country that's uh, densely populated like Japan or like Korea or Taiwan, you run the risk of becoming incredibly polluted because you have a really high population, which means you have a lot of garbage, and you only have anywhere to put it because your country's so small. Taiwan deals with that really effectively. Um, they're pretty anal about their recycling and how you separate the different bits of garbage, and I'm not used to that, so I keep running down at like 2 o'clock in the morning when there's no one around and just jumping my garbage in there. I know it's a dick move, but I don't really know how to recycle this shit or how they separate it from like cardboard and plastic and all that kind of stuff. Taiwan's a really clean place. There's never trash on the streets, um, I, at least in the two cities I've been to so far. It's really, really clean. The air is a lot cleaner uh, than mainland China. Um, it doesn't mean it's clean, it's cleaner than mainland China. But yeah, so far I'm really, really liking it. I, it, it has this really f happy feeling to it. Um, and you know, I, the. It's just the, it's the way it makes you feel when you come to Taiwan is really nice. Mainland China kind of made me feel a little bit, it can be depressing because um, you want to love the place. You dropped everything at home, you left your job, you sold all your stuff, you left your family and friends at home to move to this place and so you really want to try and make it work. And it's tough in China uh, because if you come there and you find out you hate it, well, when you sacrifice all that stuff from back home and find out you hated the thing you choose, that, that's kind of really heartbreaking. And I'm not saying I hate China, I'm just saying for a lot of foreigners, that's the way that it can make you feel. Um, whereas in Taiwan has this really kind of happy atmosphere. It's sort of upbeat and, and, and I like it. I like the way it makes me feel. But anyways guys, that's that's just it. I just wanted to update you guys and let you know how I feel about the place. I love it. It's amazing. The quality of life is just better. It's, it's nice. The uh, cost of living is still really low. Um, my apartment cost me, I don't know how much, it was like 500 Canadian dollars or something, which even for Taiwan is pretty pricey where I live. I could have gotten one a lot cheaper, but uh, I, I love living here. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching another video. You guys can check out my Facebook page or my Patreon. I also have, now that I'm out of mainland China, I have Instagram. Uh, you can follow me at prazi underscore 86, I think it is, because I'm unoriginal and I couldn't use prazi, so I just took the 86, so it was in the lady 86 and I wasn't born in 86, I don't know. Check me out on uh, Instagram. I hope subscribe. I don't know what you do with Instagram. There's so many new Western things I'm trying to figure out, all these different apps and stuff that I'm not used to, like that have all been banned in China that kind of got big while I was there that I'm trying to use. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Also, don't forget uh, Conquering Northern China that Seamilk and Winston did and, and the other film crew. That is out on Vimeo On Demand, so go check that out. I'm not sure if it's out on anything else, but do check it out. And uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful New Year, and I hope you had a good Christmas. Stay positive, keep your stick on the ice, and I'll catch you on the next one.